I suffer from a crippling social anxiety. So this is going to be just as fun for you. <laughs> as it currently is for me. As you could tell if you have eyes. I was uh, bullied at school. <laughs> and at work. And at home. And during the beatings, my mother used to say to me, Ryan. Ryan, you need to get yourself a new hobby. So I did. I took up poetry. Didn't help. <laughs> uh, but to relive some of the best moments of my life, I'm actually going to uh, perform some of the poems to the group. <laughs> this first poem is called Pauline. The reason why will become very obvious very early on in the poem. <laughs> Pauline. Gasped. <laughs> She'd never seen a cock so big. <laughs> she blushed as she stared at Robert's prize winning chicken, <laughs> whose knob was enormous. Most of my poems are based on true stories and the rest I've just written. And uh, this one is based about myself, but I changed my own name to protect my own identity. <laughs> Tim's mother called him. Help, I've fallen down the stairs, she screamed onto his answer phone. Tim called her back each day for four days. <laughs> no answer. So Tim assumes she no longer needed help. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, got a girlfriend. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I consider her to be a bit of a wag. Uh, she stinks of dog food. And <laughs> we went to the casino the other day, so I wrote a poem about that. Sandra loved the casino. She adored roulette and swooned over the free soft drinks, but she hated, despised, loathed blackjack. Fucking racist. <laughs> About 25 of my poems are any good. This is poem 250. <laughs> the game of Cluedo had gotten out of hand. Mum was searching in the shed for some lead piping. Dad was ushering Grandma into other rooms. <laughs> All whilst Uncle Mike lay dying on the floor, begging for one of them to call the ambulance. <laughs> Just a story, innit? <laughs> this is a uh, poem 249, and it's, uh, for those who care, it's actually a haiku. <laughs> You've not heard it yet. <laughs> <laughs> An earthquake struck Stoke destroying the whole city, but no one noticed. <laughs> it's because it's a shithole. That's, that's the punchline. I uh, often perform my poetry to uh, household names, such as mum and dad. And uh, <laughs> once I got the opportunity to perform in front of s these celebrities, I remember Brian Blessed was at the back, and he just went, do you just do poems? <laughs> I said, no, Brian, I'm also really good at impressions. <laughs> uh, I've often been accused of not doing relatable humour in my poems, so here's one we can all hopefully relate to. Peter had been sat in Steve's house for 30 minutes and he still didn't know the Wi-Fi password. Steve was a poor host, so Peter killed him.
but had no idea how to dispose of the body as he still couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Uh, here's another relatable one for you, if that didn't quite hit the spot. Uh, I want you to put yourself in Gillian's shoes for this poem. It's called uh, Gillian's Shoes. Uh, <laughs> sweat poured down Gillian's face. Her heart pounded as she reached the last meters of the 26 miles. She was in the lead. She must have been. There was no one else. <laughs> th th there was no one else. Maybe she'd gotten a date at the marathon wrong. Uh, I've also been accused of not moving uh, on stage, and I need to prove them wrong, these other comedians who have a go at me, so. <laughs> this next poem. <laughs> Actually, it's not a poem, it's a little note from a girlfriend. Sometimes she leaves me little notes in my set just to cheer me up when I'm on stage. This just says, isn't it strange how broken glass tastes exactly like blood? <laughs> My chicken coop is haunted. Damn poultry geists. The game of Monopoly had gotten out of hand. Mum was taking rent off all those who stepped in the lounge. <laughs> Dad was ushering Grandma into a makeshift jail. All whilst Uncle Mike lay on the floor trying to be resuscitated by paramedics. This one hits a bit close to home, so bear with me well. I might get a bit emotional. Edward was on a date. He dressed smart and even washed. <laughs> Edward smiled when he saw the table. It was beautiful, cold, white, and slabbish. The morgue was lonely sometimes. <laughs> the game of mousetrap had gotten out of hand. <laughs> Uncle Mike had died. That was before the game of operation. <laughs> uh, I, I actually did a gig in Birkenhead, and uh, there was a woman at the back, and she just went, I don't like your poem. Uh, Brian Blessed again. I, I don't like your poems, they don't rhyme. So this is for her. <laughs> Barbara moaned in pleasure. She shook in pure delight. It was a perfect fit. Everything felt just right. The moment it slotted in, and it all disappeared from sight. That's called the long, thin Tetris block. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll leave you with this last poem. <laughs> What's the matter with you now? Chris yelled, but called in answer as he'd been dead for hours.